the Misha Parrish family. How are we, my darling? Good to see you. Hello, well. baby. Sherry, how are you, sweetheart? I'm fine, thank yeah, you. Now, who's the oldest? Oh, Cheers. Oh, bless. How are you, sweet? I'm the oh, baby. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice um, to see you. Like sure. How are you? God bless. You and I are outnumbered, big boy, yes? yes. Three divas against two talented cooks. Yes, yes, Yeah, yes, basically, yes. we're fucked. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Meet tonight's brigade, the Misha Paris family. Soul diva Misha is joined by big sister Paula, a hairdresser. These two love to cook almost as much as they love to fight. Dad Trevor, a retired chauffeur, worked as a chef in his 20s. Can he still cope with the fast pace of a professional kitchen? And Mum Cherry, a retired secretary, claims she's never messed up a meal. Let's hope it stays that way. There's no room for divas. This family must pull together if they're going to get out 50 perfect dishes. <laughs> OK, I'm going to show you how to do the starter, yes? Pan fried fillet of mackerel on a warm potato salad. Mackerel, a little seasoning, salt and pepper. Mm. OK, good. Right, nice hot pan. OK. Mackerel in. OK, get that nice and crispy. It'll curl up naturally. Just put your fingers on. And then after about 30 seconds, they start to release the fibres and then just settles back down. Always cook mackerel, skin side first. 90% of the cooking will take place on its skin, yeah? If you cook it and turn it over, it gets dry very, very quickly. Mackerel's a fish you can eat pink. Uh, you have a tartare of mackerel, you can eat it raw, you can, you know, yeah, marinate mackerel, it. Yeah. So be very, very careful. When it overcooks, it gets very, very dry. OK, potatoes, in. The potatoes have been part boiled, and all you're doing is giving them a little bit of colour in the pan. Sour cream, a little teaspoon of mustard, yeah? Mix the mustard, yeah. in. Okay. You put salt and pepper on the um, potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Just yeah, a little yeah, season, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Potatoes, in. Okay. Uh, Spring onions, mix it up with the sour cream and the mustard. And what you want is a really nice sort of light mustard warm potato salad. A little touch of chardonnay vinegar, yeah? It just wakes everything up a little bit, gives it a nice sharp contrast to the richness of the sour cream, okay? Mackerel out, nicely coloured, literally finish it on top. Sourdough, nice and crispy. Yeah, on. Potatoes. You've got the crisp mackerel. No. Nice. OK. And look, just to make sure that they don't slide all over the place, take a little spoon, put that on there, and that just stops it from sliding. Yeah? Wow. Our lamb's lettuce. Again, just gently on the seasoning. A little touch of salt pepper and a little glaze right. of olive oil. Now. Once it's dressed, give it a little bit of green. OK. Fab. Very, very wow. simple. Wow. Have a little taste. Mm -hmm. right, very nice, Chef. That's good. Yeah. Oh, that's so lovely. Easy. OK, concentrate on order four cover seven nine, four mackerel, four pigeon, four strawberry glory. Yes, Chef! We'll do, yes, the, chef. We'll do those two twos yes, as a four, four, Trevor. Yes. Trevor, we'll do those two twos as a four. Yes, yes, Chef. You've got to put two more in there. Fuck me, it's going to be a long night, huh? Holy fuck. Yes, Chef! Yes. Mm. Harry, put your crisps away. Okay. Put your crisps away. I put away. them away. Yeah. I put them away. Have you considered? I've got to eat something decent tonight. Though. You are going to get fed. No, I mean, thank, thank you, you very much. Side. You're not going to eat with him. Okay. Right. Right. Guys, yeah, you're it. taking really long, right? <laughs> Come in. Yeah, but you're taking really long with the potatoes, girlfriend. Come on, guys, good. That's it. Nice. Right. Let's do a plate each. A little bit of salad round the outside. Hey, P, what you need to do, right? Get this ready. You need to get the salt and pepper. You want the salt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Potatoes. Put Touch of salt, there. Trevor. For the bite. Touch of salt, Trevor. Okay. Come on, Trevor. No, 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 you're here to cook, yeah? Not to watch. Now, are you happy with those? I'd love it. Would you pay for them? I would pay. For good. Very nice. So would I. Let's go. Onto the hot plate. Let's go. Table six, please, Jose. Now we're doing four more. Yes. Here's a food skill I've always wanted to learn. I love Chinese food, but there's one amazing delicacy so specialised that few Western chefs have ever mastered it. So today, I'm off in search of some Eastern culinary wisdom. This is Chinese dim sum, an absolute staple, even for breakfast, lunch, every day. And for the first time, I'm going to learn how to cook them properly, but under immense fucking pressure. Dim sum means touch the heart, and it's easy to see why. Here at London's Royal China Club, they serve a vast array of beautiful, intricate little dumplings and rolls from regions all over China. What began as a simple Chinese snack has evolved over thousands of years into big business all over the world.
Helping me to demystify the ancient world of dim sum is Chinese cookery expert Fuchsia Dunlop. This is one of the dim sum that sometimes Westerners find a bit more tricky because it has that slithery texture which Chinese gourmets really adore to eat. I'm used to being boss of the kitchen, but as a dim sum virgin, today I'm happy to be the pupil. Here we have the main kitchen area. OK, no, these guys are very small, do you mean petite, but look at the space. I mean, it's, it's minute behind here. Yeah, and it's like an inferno when all the walks are going. <laughs> Shit. And this one here? It's for steaming the dim sum. Yeah. Right. So you can oh, have a stack of OK, two. on top. Later, my challenge will be to get through a busy service at this top London dim sum restaurant. But with just a couple of hours before lunch, I've got a hell of a lot to learn. For now, I've been put under the expert guidance of Zheng. If anyone can speed teach me this incredible art, he's my man. In his 20 years as a dim sum chef, he'll have made well over two million of these tricky little parcels. But there's one small problem. So he doesn't speak any English at all? No. I'm screwed then. Nothing at all. Hello, good morning. <laughs> no, I'm fucked. Okay. <laughs> Luckily, Fuchsia's on hand to translate his instructions. Uh, good to see you. So what is this rice flour? My first lesson is how to make a prawn-filled potato flour dumpling called hagao. Fold it in. Just like pasta, the secret to good dim sum is as much about the wrapper as the filling. That's what's going to hold all the flavour and moisture in. Hard. So he's going to show you how to press the skins now right. from the dough. Press the skins. Unlike an Italian kitchen, there are no pasta machines in sight. Jesus. So he's using the palm of his hand. My God. They're beautiful, huh? They're so soft. Jung made it look easy. Now it's my turn. OK, use this, the finger of this hand to push it. Yeah, yeah. This, your index finger of the right hand. Look, so you're okay. holding this and just pinching, but okay. you push it with that finger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Saying that dim sum are particularly difficult because of all this fine finger work, yeah. and you have to be a bit kind of calm and patient. And... Calm and patient. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm screwed straight away, right? <laughs> calm and patient. I can't remember being this nervous in the kitchen. And as any pastry chef will tell you, hot, sweaty hands are not what you need with all this delicate work. It's so intricate. So difficult. Jesus Christ. They're extraordinary. That is a lot fucking harder than it looks, I tell you. Such intricacy. And if I thought that was difficult, I hadn't bargained on Jung's next lesson. Chung Fun. Paper thin sheets of rice and potato flour batter wrapped around a choice of fillings. Fucking hell. It's gonna get. It's really hot, so the most important thing with this is not to be afraid of scalding your hands in the steam. Right. Yeah. After just three minutes, the skin scorching paper thin sheets of batter are ready to be rolled. Sticking to the cloth like shit to a blanket. I haven't felt this clumsy since I first set foot in a kitchen 20 years ago. The real killer is to wrap the filling tightly without splitting it. OK. <laughs> Fuck me, that was hard. I mean, seriously hard. Very intricate. It's all in the manipulation of the dough. With training over, Next, I'll be put to the test under hard as nails, Henry Chow. Can't do it, this one. As the kitchen's head chef, I'm told he's every bit as tough as me. Fuck knows what service is going to be like. <laughs> Mish, this is all overcooked. Oh, Mish, it is? Touch it. I know. Absolute no. rubber. Sorry, what can I say? Where is the love? I'm, I'm trying to fucking get there. Get rid of that shit. All right, all right. Yeah. Okay. See, that was okay. the problem. You know what the problem was? Is that was trying to help yeah, me. No oh, stop trying to blame me for it. Do you know what? Take your own responsibility. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
responsibilities, love. See, if I wasn't watching her, I would have done the magic. Whatever. Oh my God. Oh, uh, Cherry and Trevor, I wish your daughters were working as quick as you two, yes? You, you right. Right. Look at them. You, right, Misha, ooh. can you do something, yes? Well, I'm yeah! Sorry, give me room, man. Right. Give me room. Okay. Okay. So, so you get the salad now, dress the salad. Pete, did you do that yeah. for yourself? Salad? Yeah. yeah. Very right, good. good. Come on, come on, come on, come on, guys. Yeah. Diva, are you happy with those? Let me see. Are you? Yeah. I'm all right with it. I'm not too crazy about those two. I'll be straight. Because it's curled up. Is that all right? I'm glad you answered the Diva. At least you know. See, you got me again. Well done. Service? Go. Fucking hell. Wait, right. Last table. Well done. Oh. I really enjoyed it. The mackerel itself was quite simple, but you get the kick from the mustard and the spring onion afterwards. Uh, really livened the dish up. Visually, it looked really great. It was lovely green sort of colouring, and the yellow was, you know, from the potatoes, it was great. Um, so, yeah, it worked really well. OK, Jose, yeah. results, please. OK. The number of diners that are willing to pay for the starter is... Oh, shit. 45 out of 15! That's fucking good news, yeah? Well done. Take yeah? a shit. Main course, let's get 50 out of 50, yeah? Yes, Clear lovely. down, yeah. get on your stations, let's oh, go. Yeah. Coming up, the brigade attempt to cook pigeon breast with a summer vegetable casserole. Out of the way. <laughs> fucking hell. But things fall apart. Now, we're just going down like a fucking dog's dinner. Right, Sherry. Gas up. Yes. Let's go. Yes. Good girl. We're on. We're on, chef. Welcome back to the F Word. Time for the main course. Pigeon breast with a summer vegetable casserole. One of my favourite birds. Very lean and very healthy. Salt, pepper, hot pan, olive oil. Pigeon breast, skin side down first. Turn. The most exciting thing about cooking pigeons is they cook in minutes. Rest. Garnish for the casserole. A nice little turn of the potatoes, a puff pastry fleur on. Puff pastry. Cut your holes and then cut them in half again. And so you've got this really nice sort of half moon shape. Egg wash. Salt. Thyme. 200 degrees. In. We're serving the pigeon casserole with a combination of delicious and summery vegetables. Smoked pancetta. Give the pancetta a really nice colour. Garlic. Giroles. That looks quite sort of autumnal. This is a summery part. Asparagus. Baby carrots. Baby leeks. Blanche. Beetroot. The colours of that. Beautiful. Red wine vinegar. We're going to delay that down to a syrup, which it starts to coat the vegetables. Chicken stock. Tarragon. Broad beans. Beautiful for the summer. The smoked pancetta has given body to the vegetable casserole, but the flavours in there are extraordinary. Slice the pigeon in half. And you'll see the colour of the pigeon now, nice and pink. Small drizzle of olive oil. Puff pastry cakes on top. Pigeon with a summer vegetable casserole. Done. Come on, yes, me. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we get 50 out of 50 I now. Really, Come on. I know, I know, yes. I know. Paula. Yes? I love this. Hand on head. Shake, shake, shake. Huh? Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. So, they come out. Yeah, we Let's rest go. them, skin side up. Red wine vinegar in. Right. Let that reduce down. Right, Paula. Yes? Get your pigeons in. Let's go. Two portions each. Okay. Right, Mish. The idea is to colour them, not cremate them. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Fucking hell. Right, Trevor. Yes, Chef. We are there. Okay. Beautiful. Nice and pink. <laughs> very, very nice. Trevor, are you happy with that? Yes, yeah, Chef. Good man. Make sure. them all like that now. <laughs> Um, Fucking hell. Right. Mish. Oh, have you done five? Down. Oh, Why have you done five? All right, man, hot cup. Give one, give I need one, the give juice, chill it. I need give, the juice, man. Chill, man, oh, chill. It's here. Say. Do you want some of mine? Jesus <laughs> Christ. Oh, right, now look at me. Look. Paula, come here. I've got one and a half pigeons. I've only got three bits of pigeon there. 
I've got two bits of pigeon there, uh, four bits of pigeon there, one, two, three, four, and five bits there. Come on, guys. We're, we're seriously letting ourselves down. To now. No, no, no. Come here. Oh, nice. Holy shit. What do you want <laughs> to do? Fucking <laughs> floss with it? <laughs> Jesus Christ almighty. <laughs> Watch out, Janet Sweet Porter's getting fruity. <laughs> Smoothies, heavenly fruit filled drinks. Mango and passion fruit. Raspberry, coconut, and banana. The perfect way to get your five a day. What? You've got to be joking. Who writes this rubbish? My goodness, we love smoothies, don't we? In fact, we drink so much of the ruddy stuff, it could fill 14 Olympic swimming pools in a year. That's almost 60 million pints. Personally, I can't stand smoothies, but you lot seem to think they're a healthy antidote to 21st century excess. But are they? If anyone bothered to read the labels, they might be surprised to find out what they're really drinking. A typical 250 ml portion is packed with natural sugar. A portion of this smoothie has twice the sugar and twice the calories as this can of Tango. This smoothie has got just as much sugar in it as this chocolate bar. This smoothie has got twice as much sugar and twice as much calories as this can of Lille. It's not all bad news. Smoothies do contain vitamin C and many contain fibre too, essential for a healthy digestive system. But what about the natural sugars? I want to hear the facts from Kath Collins, an expert dietitian. I've never, ever, ever drunk a smoothie. To me, they're like green slurry. But they're hugely popular. Well, they are because they count towards you five a day and everyone knows you should be eating more fruit and veg. And they're a good source of fibre, actually. They do contribute fibre. The problem is they're full of sugar. I thought it was natural sugar. Sugar is sugar. It has the same calorie load, same effect on your teeth. If you're having an apple, you've got mm. about 10 grams of sugar in there. Mm. Um, if you're having a smoothie, you can be having three times in one little drink. You can swallow that in less than a minute. And that's the problem. It's just so much sugar in a very small volume, taken in a very short period of time. What happens when you drink too many smoothies? If you're in energy balance, the amount of calories you're eating from your daily diet is the same as the amount your body needs. If you have an extra smoothie each day, it's giving you at least 125 calories, and over a year, that would be almost an extra stone in weight, 13, 14 pounds. They're not a low-calorie drink, and it is actually better to eat the fruit than it is to buy a smoothie. It's official. Drinking to excess isn't good for you. Oh, it looks disgusting. Oh, this is certainly not going to convert me. I've had enough of this trendy obsession with drinking fresh fruit. I'm on a mission to tell people it's far better for you just to eat it. Now, to really make my point, I've got here this repulsive fake arse. Now, this weighs 13 pounds, and that is the amount of weight you could put on in a year if you drank one extra smoothie every single day than your body actually needed. So let's try lifting it. Help! Come here! Drink one smoothie a day in addition to your normal calorie intake and you could put on weight. But do people know this? If they're not exercising enough to burn off their excess sugar, they could be lumbered with a fat ass like mine. One portion of that has got more sugar than that. No. Did you know that? No, not at all. I always think that like, a yeah. smoothie would be much better for you than a fizzy drink. Wow. Let's uh, say you're all. Uh, he's heavy. 13 pounds. <laughs> Won't be doing any running in that. <laughs> What's it feel like? A bit heavy. Gross. I drink these because like, they're meant to be good for you. The fruit is better. I don't want that bottom. <laughs> Just hold this bottom. Just try it. This is from smoothies. Yeah, that's quite shocking, actually. When you eat an apple, yeah. it takes twice as long to eat as sloping down that smoothie. Do you know how much weight you put well, on I just drink once, one day. No, 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 no. 
Oh, yeah, just like your size, isn't it? What do you mean, just like my size? <laughs> right, get rid of him. <laughs> I was going to give you a smoothie and bugger off now. Well, I think I've made my point with that horrible big ass, and I hope very much that the communities of London will now drink less smoothies and try eating a few more of these. There's only one old smoothie that I've got left to convince. Janet, good Hello. to see you, my darling. Hello. Yeah, you're looking absolutely ravishing. Right, All what right. have you been banging on about this week? I've been taking smoothies out and yes. trying to convert people to drink less smoothies Ready? and eat more real fruit. I love smoothies. What's wrong with them? Seriously. How many do you eat a week? Uh, one a day. One Sunday a day? Week. You yeah. don't? Yeah, no, seriously. It's a good job you're hyperactive. Are these seriously that full of sugar? They are full of natural sugar, fructose, right. yeah. which is still sugar. Yeah, so you're saying eat fresh fruit instead of a smoothie? Yeah. I can see you wearing that rubber ass. It suits you. It makes that dress... I've got the rubber ass. Oh, you haven't got it on? No, no, so no, no. I thought no, we had no. it on. I thought we had it on. This okay. is the rubber ass okay, that you... Look. Okay, oh, now that, Christ, oh, that is what Gordon's ass is going to look like if he is carries it, on having it, a <laughs> smoothie a day. For a year. And if you stop running marathons, God help you, because that's what your bum's going to look looks like. that looks like a pair of boots. Oh, God, not that high up. No, no, no it's the Simon Cowell light. I'm going to let it go down. It's going to sag, like everything at 60. As a... <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. I... <laughs> You'd look nice with a nice firm buttock like that, Janet. Janet, don't forget your ass, Janet! <laughs> Sherry, yeah. now the pigeons burnt, aren't they? Watch out. Yeah, they're burnt. They're fucking burnt, yeah. When they're brown, yeah, they cook. When they're black, they're fucked, yeah. <laughs> fucking hell. Now we're just going down like a fucking dog's dinner, Mish. Yes. Don't go sulky and don't give up. No, I don't give up. No. Man. Good, let's go I'm then. Just go, focused, please, yeah. Focused, yeah. Focused. Yeah. <laughs> okay, put the pan down. down put the pan down, you're on fire. No, no, on the stove. On the stove. Out the way. Fucking hell. Watch out. <laughs> Why did you do Christ that? No, cos it was burning. Eater is... You pour it on. Jesus! OK, then. <coughs> nice one, Pete. OK. Now, right, Sherry. Yeah? Table of four, yes? Table of four. Good girl. Trevor. Yeah. Table of four, yes? Table of four coming up. Fleur on. Just cut the face me, please, Sherry. Trevor, I'm loving you. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, well, done, well, done well done, well done, well done. Thank you. One talented dad, Misha Paris. Let's go. Oh, I don't like the way you're doing them. Right, now look at me. Look. This is such a shame. I've got all the fat still in the lanons. Uh, Look, yeah, I didn't leave them in London. No, you didn't. So I'm rushing it. Don't worry, it's okay. Don't worry. I need a little try here. Mish! Yeah. Come in, man, chill. Come in, man, chill. Really? Yeah. Chill. Gordon. That's the story of tonight. That's the story. Right, how are we? Very well, Good, yeah. nice to see you. How was the pigeon? The sauce that we went with it, I think we all sort of thought was very, very salty. And we could Damn, salty. Really mm. What a shame. Well, really, it was a brown chicken stock, so it was sort of there to act as a bit of a broth. Mm. Almost like it's a sort almost, of potage. It was almost misnamed if it had been uh, pigeon and summer vegetables with a jus, maybe. Or like a like jus? Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> you've you been a master words. chef, haven't you? <laughs> Fantastic, really came through. Um, really fresh, licorice flavour. The pigeon was cooked really well, crispy on the outside, tender in the middle. I thought it was very flavoursome, it was quite a strong um, taste, and yeah, no, it, was, it was really lovely. Right, Jose, the amount of customers are going to pay for the main course out of 50. <laughs> 35 out of 50. Let's get 50 out of 50, yes, yes it's all yes, dessert, yes, 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 on the yes. sections, let's get going. All right. yeah. I'm feeling great. I feel a bit, it's a bit hot in the kitchen, but I feel, you know, I could go again. We always bicker, you know, but it's, it's so harmless. It's just a sister thing, you know, it's like... Well, that's because she's the younger one, so she's always trying to prove a point. Don't tell her I told you. <laughs> you always at each other. One knows the best, the other one knows the best. You know, everyone knows the best, and they never know nothing. Next on the menu, I've been taught the basics of how to make dim sum. Now the pressure's really on as I'm thrown into service. Come in now. He's worse than me now, fucker, you know that. My brigade make a delicious strawberry glory and the squabbling siblings call a truce. Yeah, I'm sorry. Now, yeah, right, kiss, makeup, yes. <laughs> 
and Joe Brand brings a vegetarian flavour to the recipe challenge. Why are you doing a veg curry? Well, because if it doesn't taste nice enough, I'll just chop up a vegetarian and put them in. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to The F Word. Uh, now it's time for the recipe challenge with internationally acclaimed supermodel, me. <laughs> oh. Come on in. OK. What are you doing? I'm doing a veg curry. Oh, come on, Joe. You For love God's a vegetarian. Sake. Yeah, I do, when they're fast asleep. <laughs> what? Why are you doing a veg curry? Well, because if it doesn't taste nice enough, I'll just chop up a vegetarian and put <laughs> them in. Now, that I like the sound of. Uh, right, when was the last time you practised the dish? Oh, about 1947. <laughs> Is it a dish made with rationing? <laughs> uh, it was, yes. <laughs> uh, right, vegetable curry. Uh, Joe's doing a classic. Um, what's the ingredients? Uh, just quickly run through and tell me what they are. Well, that's an onion. Have <laughs> you seen one before? <laughs> Yes, and something rather uh, scary. Uh, you've been in Delia's cupboard. What is that? A jar of what? What that? It's a bulty curry paste. Yeah. You lazy bugger. Huh? Well, what's wrong with being lazy? <laughs> Just going to chop up some garlic and a bit of ginger and put that in as well. Joe, uh, yeah. to my horror, uh, bought in a curry paste. So easy to make. Coriander seeds, poppy seeds, turmeric, garlic, ginger and chilli powder into a pesto mortar. Then from there, a tablespoon of ground oil. And then, just a tablespoon of white wine vinegar. That forms a really nice paste. And it's ten times tastier How than any bought How do you know it's really nice? <laughs> I know it tastes delicious because I've made it before. You do a lot of cooking at home, don't you? Yeah, just cooking that is simple and doesn't take very long. Mm -hmm. So I can go and practice my other hobby, which is being an alcoholic. So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Now, you've got two beautiful little girls, yeah? Uh, yes. Yeah, Maisie and... Eliza. Eliza. Lovely. How old are they? One's 43 and the other's two. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, no, how old are they? Five and seven. Five and seven. What do you cook at home? I do a very nice Haribo stew, oh, nice. which they like. And then I give them chocolate. <laughs> um, that's the main course. Lucky, obviously. lucky kids, you know, they must oh, love lucky. you. On tour, yes. On what kind tour, of food do you eat? I like a nice pork pie when really? I'm on tour, yeah. <laughs> Anything you can get in a garage that is made by Ginsters always does me a treat. Do you know what? You just made me feel even more confident about winning. You know that? Huh? I've, I've browned my onions and then I've put some pepper and some aubergine in. I'm just going to dice up some potato and some cauliflower and bang that in. Uh, most daunting gig ever was when? Well, I think it was probably a gig that I did up in... Um, Bolton in a working men's club. Yeah. And as one, they all shouted, fuck off, you fat leather, as I went on. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true, in the early days, the lesbians used to complain about it, giving them a bad reputation, right? Over the years, they've signed petitions and sent them to me, telling me to tell everyone I'm heterosexual, because it's giving lesbians a bad reputation. <laughs> OK. Sweat the aubergines and the shots down first. Garlic chillies, take the heat out of them. In with the broccoli and the cauliflower, peppers. Hi. I'm now grating some lard. R See, that's my secret ingredient. Lard? All right, it's coconut. It's coconut. It's quite a jazzy curry, this thing, you know that? Huh? Is it? Well, it sounds it. You're from Scotland, aren't you? Yeah. And they're very it. healthy there, aren't they? Because <laughs> yeah. I always used to think the Scotland, you know, they've got the highest rate of heart disease yeah. in Europe. Sorry? Which yep. means you get decent grub there. <laughs> You've lost a lot of weight, haven't you? I've lost a bit of yeah. weight. A training or is it through diet? You know, I trained for the marathon I heard a couple of years ago. I heard you trained for the marathon. Ago. What yeah. happened? Thank Christ I had a virus the week before, so I really? couldn't do it. Yeah. And all that training? Or should I say, I should say Christ on telly, because people get upset. <laughs> Thank fuck. <laughs> Were you looking forward to running the marathon? Well, uh, what I wasn't looking forward to was dying in front of thousands <laughs> of people, cos I thought I might, cos I'm a fat person. I was a fat chef once. Were you? 17 and a half stone. In fact, just under 18 stone when I ran my first marathon. Wow. It was a fucking nightmare. I got back, it was dark, the family had fucked off home, and I was picking cones up on the way home. You see, that's the thing I was worried about, cos I estimated my time during the marathon... Go on. ..at about 12 and a half hours. <laughs> you could do it within 12 hours, Joe. Come on. Do you reckon? Uh, yeah. Curry paste in. Little handful of coriander, rolled up, and just fry off the coriander. Finish with a touch of garlic and chopped tomatoes. Up to the boil and let it cook out. What does cook one... out mean? <laughs> cook Ooh, out is when you... out. The raw, the, the raw paste, um, curry paste. Yeah. It's very tart because it's all very uh, raw. So raw garlic, raw ginger. Um, cook it out, let it mellow. 
Can I come and have a look at yours? You can come have a look at mine. Now it's sort of disintegrated and... That looks like something you'd get out of a Heinz tin. To me. <laughs> Joe Brand. <laughs> right, we're both going to simmer now. Come back and Joe loses. As simple as that. <laughs> Right, back to dim sum, and it's time for service. In my quest to learn how to make dim sum, I'm about to be thrown in at the deep end at the Royal China Club in London. This place can do over 200 covers, and like any head chef worth his salt, the uncompromising Henry Chow expects his brigade to jump on the orders as soon as they come on. Trouble is, they're all in Chinese. How the fuck do you understand that? What does that say? <laughs> That says the um, fresh um, shrimp chunk Fresh shrimp So you already know how to make it. I've never been in a kitchen where I've never been in control, so this is really fucking weird. All right, dish. But Icy Cool Head Chef Henry is in control. He's clearly a man after my own heart. He won't let a morsel leave his kitchen unless it's absolutely perfect. Understandably, he's watching his most recent recruit like a hawk. So will my first effort pass muster with my tough new master? No. <laughs> no? What's wrong? No good. He said it's not all right. Uh, What's wrong with it? Uh, it's not tight enough. It's not wrapped. It's too loose. It's not wrapped tightly enough around the dough. You have to do it tightly next time. Tighter. Fucking hell. It's fucking what, Wyler? More shrimp. Come in now. Fucking hell, hello. Hey, by my side. Jesus. I'm determined to get some of my dim sum past Henry and out to the diners. I may be an award-winning chef, but as soon as I'm sending plates out, they're coming back. Can someone go for the soup and give the dumpling a rest? I think Fuchsia's enjoying this a lot more than I am. They're too small and there's not enough filling in them. They should be a bit more fuller. It's a pleasure to learn a new skill, but I hate getting a bollocking, even in translation. With service nearly over, it's my last chance to achieve dim sum perfection. Fucking hell. He's worse than me, that fucker, you know that? Huh? Jesus Christ. He's happy with that last one, yes? Oh, hey, really good. Yeah. Excellent. Happy? Yeah? Good. Fuck me. Thank fuck for that. I tell you. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was fucking phenomenal. Really tough to begin with and very intricate. And who would have thought that you're spending £3, £4.50 for a bowl of fucking dim sum and they're all made by hand. Extraordinary. Just goes to prove that fucking Chinese cookery is not all about a wok. Fucking hats off. Working in Henry's kitchen has really inspired me. And with lunch service out the way, I want to show him a dish of my own. Right, gonna do a little um, dumpling, but my mate, and see what the guys think. My Chinese style tortellini is based on a mixture of prawns, scallops, and crispy duck. The texture of the scallop and the shrimp together, delicious. I'm hoping head chef Henry will be so impressed he'll put it on his menu. Pull that fat off. Let me just chop that up. Really nice combination. The duck. I'm adding finely chopped ginger, garlic, and a squeeze of lemon juice. Lemon juice in. OK, coriander. Finally, some finely sliced mixed veg. Texture and colour in. Keep it nice and whole so you can identify it. Right. So with these... I'm borrowing a few of John's expertly flattened skins. The scallop. Really nip it together. Little tortellinis. Nice. Very good. Okay. We're steamed now? Yeah. Four minutes. Nice. They look good. So what does the dim sum master and his brigade make of my duck and seafood tortellini? Thank you. You like, Henry? Little. What don't you like? 
give a five out of ten. Five out of ten? Yeah. Little fucker. <laughs> five out of ten. <laughs> five out of ten. Hey, tell him there's no MSG in there either. Huh? No Jesus. Five out of ten from these guys is high praise indeed. In another 20 years, maybe I'll merit a six. So it's not going on as a special tonight? Uh, do you see things here there? No. No. <laughs> Tell no. him when he goes back to school, I'll take over. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cream? Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> It's all going pear shape. You're like a fucking boy in a chocolate <laughs> shop. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Uh, now whip her cream up. Let's go. This. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Gordon, oh, it just came off by now. itself. Guys, that's the eject button. Yes. Yeah, that's the on button. button. Oh, that's why it came Misha off. will blame the apparatus. <laughs> Strawberry glory. A great way of celebrating the best of British strawberries. Strawberries. Half. Ice and sugar, balsamic vinegar. The combination of the tartness of the vinegar against the sweetness of the strawberries is mind-blowing. Drizzle over the strawberries. Ice and sugar. Pan. Nice and hot. Strawberries in. Caramelize. Literally 15 to 20 seconds, a quick toss, and then back out. Creme patisserie. Commonly known as a really nice thick custard. Milk, cream, boil. Egg yolks, sugar, whip, 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 flour. Take out one third of the cream and milk. Stir. Once that's liquefied, put all of your milk and your cream in there. Put it back in the pan. Bring the custard up to the boil, which will cause it to go really nice and thick. Into the fridge to cool down. Cream, ice, and sugar. Don't over whip the cream just as it's starting to fall through your whisk. Get your thick custard, take off one third. Whisk. And the rest of it straight in. Look at that. Nice, just falling through the whisk. Now for the exciting part, putting this little baby together. Strawberries, juice, pastry cream, crushed meringue, repeat. A really nice ball. Vanilla ice cream. Sit that on top of the thick, rich custard. Juice. Grated chocolate. It wouldn't be complete without one of these. A good old fashioned British wafer. Strawberry glory. Done. Strawberries, meringue, cream, strawberries, meringue, cream, ice cream, chocolate wafer. Ah, yeah, okay. Sprinkle the, uh, sprinkle the chocolate on top. Well done. You Good. The Off you go, buddy. Come Off on, you go. Yeah. If no one pays for this dessert, yeah, they don't deserve to be in here. Go, please. Go, right. please. Come on. Go, 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 go. Let's go. <laughs> Misha, my darling. Yeah. You with me? Yeah, man. I'm yeah. with you, man. Proper. All right, so yeah. there you go. That's another four, oh. yeah? Earth to, Earth to Trevor. Earth to Trevor. There. Wafers. Yeah. Wafers. Take it, take it. Fuck me. Wafers? Yes. I'm going to need a fucking week in the Priory after this fucking service. Let's go. Holy fuck. What was the naughtiest thing you two did when you were kids? I know what she did to me, what was naughty. Go on. One day, yeah. I think I was about nine, and yeah. she stole my two pence. Do you remember that? Didn't steal it. <laughs> she took my two pence, but you don't understand. Back no, then, two was pence was like, it was like ten pounds when you were a kid back then. You know, it was a Serious. lot of money. Paula ran up. I Paula, steal it. I'm don't teasing please, her. Can I tell him a story? Can I tell him indoors? Yeah. Jesus. She ran up with my two p. I and she ran up. I was playing a game. Can I just true. tell him the tell story? Him oh, for God's sake! I was banging the door down because I was like, I want my two p. I was screaming. Listen, tonight, you are going to forgive her right yes. now. Yeah, I'm sorry. Now, yeah, right. Kiss, make up. Yes. That's nice. That's nice. And will you, for <laughs> and will you forgive her? All right then. Uh, <laughs> Give it back. Wait right there. Give it back. I gave it back to you, <laughs> silly boy. <laughs> right. I only two left. Let's go. Two Make these pieces. perfect. Right. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Right, okay, off we go. Last, last table. You know what, can off I just, just, can I just say go. that I feel like a weight has been lifted? <laughs> oh, last table, Sherry. At the last Trevor, table. well fucking done. done. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
coming up. Will Joe Brand be laughing at the results of the recipe challenge? Is it going to be Joe Brand or Joe Bland? Harry Enfield sorts out dessert. Now, Mitch, do you remember? You're yes. taking Coke. That sounds and like you're on smack <laughs> now, aren't you, Teddy? <laughs> and we find out whether the brigade has what it takes to come back to the F Word restaurant for final service. The number of guests that are going to pay for dessert is... Right, welcome back to the F Word, and time for the results of the recipe challenge and for Joe Brand to understand why you should never use a bought-in curry paste. Are you ready? <laughs> now, this is the bit I seriously like, side by side. You see, Hang mine on. looks delicious, and yours looks like it's out of a jar. That's very chefy. <laughs> <laughs> Josie, come back with the right result. Hey, good luck. Yeah, good luck, uh, loser. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Thank you. Thank you. Just got a big bit of black pepper in there, I think. Mm -hmm. Are you yeah. ready? Mmm. It's very mild, though, isn't it? Mm. It's not it's hot at all. It's got not got a massive amount of flavour to it. Mm. Next one. Next. Okay. There's a lot more going on there. Tastes more like yeah. how do you think a curry should taste as well, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. A lot more flavour. Yeah. More flavour. And it's good aftertaste as well. It's much more of a punch. Mm. Mm. Okay, here we go. How are you feeling first? Oh, very confident. Very confident, yes. Is it going to be Joe Brand or Joe Bland? Yeah? It was actually quite close. Right, come on, yeah. they like both. Who's the winner? Gordon, you did. Yes! <laughs> what was the... Well, the for, for Joe, the uh, fresh flavours, certainly. A bit more overpowering on the coriander, I believe. <laughs> 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 coriander. There's well, a little bit at the end. I did put half a tree in. Look at your face. <laughs> You're loving this, aren't you? I, uh... Do you want to do a little dance on the pass? <laughs> Yes! Excellent! You know I hate losing. Uh, uh, I've been waiting all day for that one. <laughs> yes, really good to see you. Thanks, but no thanks. Now yeah, fuck yeah, off out yeah. of my kitchen. Yeah, up yours. <laughs> <laughs> How was it? Amazing. I licked, I licked my bowl. Yeah. You licked your bowl? <laughs> yes. That's she my really kind did. of girl. Well done. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and did you manage to get your tongue all the way down to the bottom? No, I had to put my finger in. <laughs> Happy diners. I'm so pleased. Yeah. Are you going to pay for dessert? Yes. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. We'll pay for everything. Ladies, pay really good everything. to see you. Yes. It's extremely fresh. It, everything complements each other. The juices were, were gorgeous and uh, the strawberries just melted in your mouth. Gentlemen, good to see you. Harry, how are you? Hello. Welcome. Hello. Oh, thank you very much. Good to see you guys. How was dinner? It was fantastic. Yeah. What did you like about it? Uh, the salt. The salt. Basically. It was Too delicious. Salt. <laughs> it was delicious. Because you're quite a foodie, right? <laughs> Can't you tell I'm a foodie? I actually seduced my wife through food. Oh, serious? What did you cook? Yeah. Well, it was something from a Delia Smith book. But oh, it had... get away. No, it was, but it was... What, full you know, of cans? 15 years ago. Oh, 15 years ago. Yeah, and it was... I, I remember it was cods and it had capers and it was, it was actually was it? delicious. What was it? A sort of coddy, capery thing. Right. Anyway, I won her. With that meal, I never had to cook again. She's a very good cook. That's nice. You used to date Lily Allen's mum at one stage. Did Lily? you know she was going to be a potential star? Did you? Could you see it at that age? Uh, she was always very clever yeah. and and very 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 funny and slightly mm -hmm. ahead of the crowd. She was in my show. She was like a kid on the knee. You, you know, we do the old gigs. Yeah. We'd scare a yeah. kid and she'd be there. Yeah. And Amy Winehouse was in the fast show. That's so amazing. We're quite cool, you know. Recently, you've been involved in dramas. Yes. Yes. Did you run out of jokes? Did you go dry? Did you? Did, uh, you, did you? Oh no! I just got asked to do this skin thing. Mm -hmm, I've great. done a bit of directing, and I got asked to do I some of that. So I did a bit of that. They're all very good. All the all the people in yeah. it. They're all very good, but they're kind of young. So it's mm -hmm. a bit like being a school teacher because they don't really concentrate. You know, they're busy with their own lives and yes. doing what they're doing. So you have uh -huh. to sort of go, okay, okay, kind. Yeah, they're all. Come on, everyone. What are we yes. doing? Okay. Now, Mitch, do you remember? You're yes. taking coke in yes. this scene. Have you got your coke? <laughs> Have you? Have you got your line? That sounds and like you're skins. on smack now, aren't you, Tony? <laughs> Where is your smack? You haven't got it, have you? Can we get the smack? There's quite a lot of that goes on. OK, and turnover, people. <laughs> Right. Right. Okay. Josie, please give me the results quickly. I'm shitting myself, yes? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever happens, I thought you did bloody well. Yeah, you're fast, you're good, and more importantly, you worked as a team again. Yes? Oh. And one thing that came out of it, you are a lovely, tight knit family. Well done. Thank you. Really well done. The number of guests that are going to pay for 
desserts 50. is 50. 44 out of 50. That's good. That's very, very good. Well, I said 45 as well. So, a grand total of 124 out of 150. Well done. Oh, well done. Now, Misha, here's the good news. Sadly, you're not coming back.